Hey guys, Brenda New Productions here, and welcome to this. Uh, welcome to the next part of how to code or how to use the Vim text editor. There's a lot to cover today, so I'm just going to jump right into it. If you have read the title, you know what this video is going to be about. So let's go ahead and jump into opening our test text document that we've been working on. Now, the first thing I actually want to show you is how to open text documents without right-clicking on them and pressing Edit with Vim. Um, so if we wanted to do that, we could just go ahead and open up GVim, Graphical Vim, by double-clicking on the icon on our desktop here. And then I'm going to move the window open. And in order to actually open the text file from the um, from the program itself, we could either press File and Open, or we could use the command line colon E, which means Edit, and then the file name. So we're just going to edit test.txt. And then once we do that, it automatically opens the file, and it did it rather quickly as well. And we can get right to editing. So the next thing I want to discuss is the copy, cut, and paste functionality. Now, the copy, cut, and paste functionality actually works a little differently than everything else does within your computer. In fact, when using Vim, it has, it has its own specific buffer, which means if you want to copy, cut, and paste um, using the key commands that I'm about to describe, well, then you're only going to copy, cut, and paste into and out of Vim. You're not going to actually be able to use these keyboard commands to take anything out of Vim and then copy it or paste it somewhere else. You're only going to be limited to whatever you are working on in Vim, in, in Vim's current buffers, is what they call it. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the copy command. Now, in Vim, it's not actually called copying. It's called yanking. And what you need to do is you can yank things. <laughs> you, you can just yank things. So since it's called yank, you do this with the keyboard uh, command Y. So if we were to go over to this capital T here, using our basic navigation techniques that we've learned, and press Y, um, you can see that it actually brings up the the little half cursor, which means it's except it's waiting for a modifier. So if we press Y and then L, we know that what that does, um, using our knowledge from the last tutorial, is it actually opens up the the yank command and then it does it one time. Like since we combine it with a modifier of L to move to the right, it yanks from the current position to one position over. So it will copy our capital T. Now, while still in command mode, we can actually move down a line and press P to paste. So if we press lowercase p here, we're just going to go ahead and paste this capital T right into our document. Now, just like with all commands, we can also use capital Y to yank f to the end of a line. So I just pressed capital Y here. And then if we go onto this line and we press P, you can see that it actually, well, it actually yanked the entire line. Um, so that's interesting. So apparently, capital Y yanks the entire line. So we've already covered yanking. Um, and keep in mind that yanking can actually be used with all modifiers. So for example, if we want to yank this word here, another, we can type Y-E, and then that will yank from our current position to the end of the word. And then if we test type P to paste that back in, we can see that we got the word another which is great. So now, um, now that we've covered yanking to a decent extent, um, we can cover the actual, its mirror functionality, pasting with P. Now P is very, very simple to use. As we have seen, once we yank things, we can just go ahead and paste them back down with P. However, there is the lowercase and uppercase uh, derivatives of P. The lowercase P, just like lowercase O, pastes after um, our current selection. So if we're currently selecting this S here, um, yes, if we currently have S selected here, if we press lowercase p, it will paste after the S. If we press capital P, however, we can see that it pastes before the S. So just like uppercase and lowercase o, the difference in um, the p's is <laughs> the difference in the P's. The difference in the lowercase and uppercase P's is that lowercase P pastes after, while uppercase P pastes before. And that is that. So now, with our, with our knowledge of using um, yanking and pasting, we can actually navigate the documents even more complicated than we could before. For example, we can take this, this is another line line, copy the entire line using capital Y, go over to um, OPPOO here, and then we can type in capital P. And since we copied the entire line, that also included a new line character. So if we type in capital P, 
um, that's going to paste the entire line before the current line. So we just copy that entire line um, above our line that said OOPOO. And similarly, if we want to paste it below, we can go ahead and press lowercase p. Great. So now we've got copying and pasting down. What about cutting? Well, in our previous tutorial, we actually learned about the delete command, uh, which was D. Now, the funny thing about the delete command is it doesn't actually delete everything entirely. It deletes the um, our current selection or whatever we tell it to delete. It deletes it from our current document, but it puts the contents that we actually deleted inside of Vim's buffers. And then once it's inside of Vim's buffers, we can go ahead and use the P command to paste it back in. For example, if we have this word here, another, and we type DW to delete the entire word, then we can go ahead and actually go over here to this blank line and press P, and another can then be pasted in. So this works with all delete modifiers. For example, if we go over here and we type capital D, which, as we know, deletes till the end of a line, and then we go over to this line and press P, um, we just pasted what we deleted back into that line. So, using a combination of yanking, deleting, and pasting, we have the functionality of cutting, copying, and pasting. However, we can use it from our keyboard uh, with our Vim commands. So, just to make this document even better than what we had before, let's go ahead and add in these definitions. So I'm going to press O to open up a new line, press Enter, and then create these new things. So, in review, we have lowercase y, which yanks a single character, or lowercase y um, yanks whatever, whatever we specify. So that uses a modifier. Um, a, a modifier to, to tell what unit, if you will, we are yanking from, whether it be a word, a line, um, the entire line, if you want to yank a few lines down, what have you. Then we have the, the capital Y command, which yanks the entire l current line. We then have the lowercase p command, which pastes, uh, pastes from the Vim buffer uh, before the current no, wait, <laughs> my bad. Lowercase p does after the current cursor position. And capital P pastes from the Vim buffer before the current cursor position. Um, then we covered, uh, we covered D in the previous tutorial. However, now we can enhance its definition by saying and uh, essentially cuts it. So the reason I'm saying cut is just because it's analogous to the functionality in Windows or Mac that is commonly referred to as cutting, where you cut something, it deletes it, and then you're able to paste it. So this is how to use cut, copy, and paste within Vim. It's pretty simple. Um, the, the main complication that you need to get down is that all of these keyboard commands only work within Vim. So, for example, if you want to copy into another document, you would have to open it in Vim. And let's go ahead and uh, demonstrate that here. So we have this to core line, and we want to copy the entire line into another document. So we're going to type in capital Y, which it doesn't look like it does anything, but it actually yanks the entire current line. And then we're going to open up another document with um, Vim's edit command, which is colon E, and we're just going to call, call this document test2.txt. And actually what we want, what it wants us to do is it wants us to save this document first, so we're going to do that with dub, colon W, and then we're going to type colon E um, test2.txt. And now we are in this new document. So now that we're in this new document, we can go ahead and press P, and it actually copies that entire line, including the new line character, um, after our current line because we used uh, lowercase p. Now if we were to type capital P, you could see that it pastes it before the current selection and puts its new line after. So now that we have this test2.txt uh, document here, we don't want to save it, we just want to quit it. However, if we type colon q, it's going to say, you didn't save the document. So we can type colon q exclamation point to override this message and simply quit the document. So now we've quit Vim. Um, we've learned how to copy, we've learned how to cut, we've learned how to paste, and we're all set. Thanks a ton for watching this tutorial. I'll cover a lot more stuff in the future, and I hope to see you there. Have a great day. Peace.